Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Zippo85. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. This is the type of integration that Tesla has been setting the foundation for for years, and hopefully in years to come, they can do a lot more of. Tesla sent this email to some owners in the UK saying, order food on the go. You can now place an order through Just Eat Takeaway on your vehicle touchscreen and pick up meals or groceries immediately upon arrival at a supercharger. Simply go to the facilities menu for available supercharger locations including Tottenham, Gatwick, Park Royal, Cardiff, Leeds, West Drayton, and Manchester South. This Just Eat Takeaway is a food delivery marketplace connecting consumers with over 699,000 partners in 20 different countries. Their website shows they operate in the United States and Canada through Grubhub. Back in June 2021, this Just Eat Takeaway completed their acquisition of Grubhub. But whether it's Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, or even the restaurants and stores that are around supercharger locations directly, Tesla has plenty of opportunities for more deals like this. Now, hopefully over the next week or so, we get some customers over in the UK that have this option, sharing some videos on the specifics of how it'll work. David on X said, looks like white interior Tesla Model 3s will begin delivering in the US starting today. His delivery window is April 19th to the 26th. Over the past few weeks, many white interior customers continually had their delivery dates pushed back. It appears as though the Tesla Mega Pack has not escaped Elon's plans for streamlining and overhauling the sales and delivery program. Now on the website, you no longer have the option to place an order directly. Even scrolling all the way down to the bottom, all you'll find is a form to inquire about the Mega Pack. All I know is that the contact form would in theory help Tesla weed out some customers who maybe aren't as serious as they may think. Perhaps customers were placing orders and then ultimately backing out or having questions or problems. So this way Tesla can filter through who's actually serious. That's pure speculation though on my part. While the Tesla Semi having more time for testing and iteration does have some benefits, it comes with some trade-offs as well. According to Pepsi executives, as of this month, they've only received 36 Tesla Semis of the 100 that they've ordered. On that order, Pepsi has secured over 20 million dollars in government grants to cover the cost of 32 of the semis plus federal subsidies of forty thousand dollars per vehicle a pepsi spokesperson said the company's plans for the semis can shift when technology and the need to establish infrastructure is involved on the other hand we have a transportation director from a company in norway saying we are not happy with the situation at tesla it's almost seven years now. It's a long time to wait. This individual placed an order for 10 semis in 2017. UPS reserved 125 Tesla semis also in 2017. A spokesperson for them said it's working closely with Tesla to determine a date for us to take delivery of the trucks. Meanwhile, potential Tesla semi customers like UPS, Walmart Canada, Cisco, and Snyder National have all said they're turning to Daimler Truck who makes the Freightliner eCascadia. All four Four companies said they had begun to put dozens of eCascadia trucks on the road. An officer from Pepsi said they're working on building out the infrastructure to support an electric fleet, including employees who can service the vehicles and power grids strong enough to charge them. You're talking about a system. All of those things have to happen before we can electrify the fleet. That Norwegian company is using electric semis from Scania in Volvo while it waits for Tesla. He said Tesla told him Tesla's prioritizing semi deliveries to Pepsi and other US customers. I do believe the world deserves an update here on the Tesla semi program. Taking customer deposits in 2017 and still leaving people hanging seven years later is just not a good look. I know the illness happened, but really that's not a great excuse. You may recall on an earnings call at the end of 2022, Elon said that Tesla was planning to build 50,000 semis annually starting in 2024. And listen, most people would understand if Tesla would just communicate about what's really going on, what's holding this project back. Things happen and Tesla's trying to do something here that's never been done before. There are plenty of holdups on the infrastructure side and that has to come first as we've been saying, but at some point we all need some more clarity on 
what's going on. And as Heinrich Zane pointed out earlier this month, the site where this new semi-production facility is going to be, the foundations have not really even been laid yet. The most recent update we got from Tesla was they're looking at volume production of the Tesla Semi by the end of 2024. And as we look at things right now, that doesn't look very promising. Losing a few customers is certainly not the end of the world. And many of these other trucks have inferior specs relative to the Tesla Semi, which is why people have been waiting for so long. But a bit more communication along the way would be nice. Even though Mercedes level three technology is a bit gimmicky in my opinion, and is only available in very limited circumstances, we have to tip our caps for them at least trying. In California and Nevada, the only two states where they can actually sell these level three equipped cars, so far they have made about 65 customer deliveries. These first deliveries are for the US market. Mercedes has been selling these vehicles in Europe now for a few years. In the US, the annual subscription will set you back $2,500. Their CTO is now expecting level four autonomous tech will be available to consumers by 2030. Tesla has voluntarily issued an actual recall in this case for over 3,800 Cybertrucks. It's the problem we've been talking about, the pad on the accelerator pedal that can come loose and get stuck. Why it happened, an unapproved change introduced lubricant soap to aid in the component assembly of the pad onto the accelerator pedal. Residual lubricant reduced the retention of the pad to the pedal. At no charge to the customer, Tesla will replace or rework the accelerator pedal assembly. And as of April 17th, Cybertruck vehicles in production were already equipped with a new accelerator pedal component. Even though the brakes still work if this problem existed, Tesla was still fortunate to escape with no injuries or accidents. Naturally, that was getting most of the attention today. Most people were missing the fact that nearly a half a million Ford Bronco SUVs and Maverick pickups were also recalled. Those vehicles failed to detect a low battery charge, which could lead to a loss of engine and electrical power while driving, aka problems with a 12 volt battery that could cause these cars to stall when coming to a stop. On X, Scott said, why hasn't Tesla integrated Uber into its entertainment system for ride hailing drivers? To which an Uber employee responded, working on it. Homar said, Uber's already able to see the battery status of my Tesla to send out rides that are within range. They should start using the API to send addresses too. Earlier this year, Uber started sharing data with Tesla on where its drivers need charging infrastructure the most, which includes areas where drivers do most of their trips. Uber was also offering its drivers purchase incentives up to $2,000 for Tesla's Model 3 and Y. I'm of the camp that Tesla doesn't need to partner with anybody when it comes to autonomy and actually operating the ride hailing app, whatever that looks like. But having strategic partners or large customers is rarely a bad thing. This will be one to watch. I'm playing this one partly as a warning and partly because I just enjoy Dan Ives and his quips. And I think right now the big nervousness is Model 2. That's a key part of the growth. That's 50 to 60 percent of the incremental growth next two or three years. Robo taxis, autonomous, that's not for another five to six years. And I'd say, look, we've seen over the last decade, we've been through a lot of white knuckle moments from Musk and Tesla. This is up there. And this has really been a Cinderella story that in the near term has really turned into a nightmare on Elm Street. He, it all starts next Tuesday needs to control the narrative. Because if there's no adult in the room, there could be darker days ahead. So if, if, if he really does say, we're, we're, we're going to play this long game, and it's going to come at the expense of the two, you would re-rate? That would be, if that happened, it would be a disaster of epic proportions. But this for the, I'd say for the first time in five, six years, long-term Tesla bulls are really calling, feels like they're about to hit the elevator if they don't hear what they want on Tuesday. Now, I don't agree that robo taxis have to be five or six years away, but the key is that Elon is the wild card here when it comes to next Tuesday. Is he going to be the GFY guy or is he actually going to try to answer some of Wall Street's questions and bring some clarity to what's going on at Tesla right now in many different directions? All I'm saying, 
If history is our guide, then the former is probably more likely. We got this video of the new Polestar phone being unboxed for the first time, and the word is deliveries are slated to begin in China toward the end of April. Some background in the Chinese market, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay do not exist, so many automakers have to do their own software. Some of the features with the phone, the ability to customize backgrounds and wallpapers like a laptop or a tablet, run multiple apps at once in various windows, and use the smartphone's camera for video calls are all things they plan to bring in total sync with the actual vehicle. I have three weeks until I'm home from this golf trip, and then my focus will be squarely on fitness and performance from a physical standpoint. Most people have no idea what you can accomplish at home with less than 20 minutes or so a day. I won't say too much now, but while I have your ear, I want to encourage you to start wherever you're at and prioritize health and movement if you you're not. Coming from the fitness world, it was an easy choice to partner with a company like AG1, and yes, they sponsored the channel, but having been in that world, I can tell you much of the wellness industry is a scam. AG1 actually goes the extra mile to explain its sourcing, to put its products up to third-party studies, to bring on leading researchers and experts in the field, and a list of other moves that have given me confidence in the company and the product. I'm a human, I have days where I order out or go out with friends and I'm just not in the mood for whatever's in the fridge. On those days, AG1 is even more important for me because it does actually give me peace of mind knowing that I'm feeding my body what it needs even on days my discipline is not there. Every serving has 75 vitamins and minerals with only 50 calories, six carbs, and less than one gram of sugar. And hey, maybe a little skin in the game can provide you an extra boost to make good choices. And if you wanna try it out for yourself, you can still grab five travel packs in a one year supply of vitamin D3 K2 for free. You can use my link below or the QR code right on the screen. Enjoy. Look, most of you guys know I am not an alarmist. However, I've been thinking about this a lot as of late and I just wanna lay out some data points and some things to consider. And full disclosure, I do feel strongly that if this vote for Elon's compensation plan goes south, that could mean some not great things for Elon and Tesla, both in the short term and in the longer term. There are prominent people out there saying that this vote should pass no problem for Elon. Personally, I am not so sure and I'm about to share the reasons why, but at the very least, I hope this little exercise encourages you to actually vote your shares, and not just sitting back and expecting everything to just work out. Back in 2018, when the first vote happened where it passed with about 73%, it was a much different company. That was before profitability, before the huge Tesla stock run-up, so the investors at that time were a closer-knit community, more of the early supporters. I've also seen people say, if Elon doesn't get this comp plan, it's no big deal because most of his wealth is already tied up in Tesla. That's just not true. The most recent estimate for the SpaceX valuation is about $180 billion. As far as we know, Elon owns about 45%, putting his stake in that at about $81 billion. Then when you consider a future IPO for Starlink, this then becomes a huge driver of Elon's net worth. Tesla's valuation right now is right around 470 billion. If Elon only owns that 13%, that's $61.1 billion. So I'm not saying I think Elon would quit if he doesn't get this pay package, but what I'm saying is that after projects like FSD and Optimus, which aren't going to leave Tesla and those two alone will most likely keep him there to some degree, keeping Elon at Tesla beyond those two projects then becomes a major question mark. Plus, many of the newer investors, both retail and institutional after 2018, are actually going to be down on their Tesla holdings. It's also been pretty obvious that as Tesla's investor base has grown over the past years, so has the negative sentiment toward Elon. Plus, Tesla entered the S&P 500 in December of 2021, so there were many passive index funds now buying Tesla. In the past, Elon has said, decisions are being made on behalf of actual shareholders that are contrary to their interests, major problem with index and passive funds. Elon was talking about companies like Glass Lewis and ISS, Institutional Shareholder Services, that actually make recommendations to these passive funds 
on how they should vote for each company's proposals. Elon said, far too much power is concentrated in the hands of shareholder services companies like ISS and Glass Lewis because so much of the market is passive index funds which outsource shareholder voting decisions to them. ISS and Glass Lewis effectively control the stock market. So why does any of this matter? Elon also said, I call them ISIS, referring to ISS. There's a lot of activists that basically infiltrate those organizations and have strange ideas about what should be done. Further, Vanguard, who uses both ISS and Glass Lewis, is Tesla's biggest shareholder. And if you go back into the archives, in 2018, both ISS and Glass Lewis recommended against Elon's last pay package. So my point here is these two companies who have sway over a much larger portion of the people that are now voting this time around could certainly sway the outcome. ISS has also said if an executive already owns 15 or 20% of a company's outstanding shares is not already motivated to act in the interests of shareholders, there's no credible argument increasing that stake to 25 or 30% will suffice to accomplish that goal. Plus, ordinarily, the turnout is much greater on the institutional side when it comes to voting because they have so much money at stake. In contrast to that, the turnout on the retail side historically is not that great. It is worth mentioning, although a lot of this was misleading, that one of Tesla's biggest individual shareholders, Leo Koguan, is planning to vote against Elon's comp plan. But if you do the math, his 27 million shares are only about 0.8% of Tesla's outstanding standing float. And I know it's anecdotal, but I'm telling you, I'm in the forums and the comments every day now, and I've been doing it for a couple of years. The sentiment now amongst the retail community is most certainly more anti-Elon than it was back in 2018. Now, this data from the Dow Jones indices is about three years old, but it's still going to prove the point. There was a record at that time, $5.4 trillion parked in funds that passively track the S&P 500. Then when we look at Tesla's weight in the S&P 500. Of course, these numbers aren't currently accurate, but if we use 1%, it'll certainly get us in the neighborhood. 1% of 5.4 trillion is $54 billion. Now, if Glass Lewis and ISS are encouraging most of that $54 billion to vote against, that right there alone would effectively be on par with the same amount that Elon owns in Tesla. So again, I'm not trying to argue I think this is likely, but I do want to be on the record in saying if this is the beginning of the movement of Elon eventually leaving Tesla or being less involved, it will not be a good thing for Tesla stock. I just have to say at this point, I have a very strong sense that there are many people that are not fully grasping the potential ramifications of this scenario. To everybody saying that the odds are very high that Tesla shareholders will approve Elon's comp plan, I thought it would be wise to share some counterpoints to the other side of the argument. I wanna be clear, I'm not predicting I think the vote is going to fail. I'm just saying I think things are significantly different now than they were back then, so let's not get lazy with this one. And maybe most importantly, the crux of the matter, Elon saying he was uncomfortable working to make Tesla a leader in AI and robotics without having 25% voting control of the company. The unfortunate truth is if a group of nefarious actors working through ISS or Glass Lewis wanted to take over Tesla in some shady way, now when we're near peak uncertainty would definitely be the time to do it. Think about it. If they can limit Elon's ownership and thus control at Tesla, if they can get Kimball and Murdoch off the board replaced with somebody they would prefer in there, a couple years from now, we could be staring at a Tesla company that looks very different than the one that many of us have been envisioning for the past few years. Tesla stock closed the day at $147.05, down 1.92%, while the NASDAQ was down 2.05%. It was a normal volume day for Tesla, trading about 5 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. Don't forget, check out AG1 linked below if you're interested, maybe kick off the weekend on the right foot. Hope you guys have a safe and wonderful weekend. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.